Tonja, you don't pull your punches when it comes to criticizing the Barisan government or the system it's based upon. And you've also kind of taken up this image yourself as some of a kind of a, you know, a, a bulldog. When it, I mean, you're kind of speaking <laughs> plainly. But I want to ask you, for starters, you worked for several decades in the belly of the beast. I mean, you worked for the, Night, the New Straits Times and the Star. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that? How do I explain that? I mean, uh, it, it seems to, to contravene what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's okay. Yeah, I mean, right. unless you've only just come to consciousness. No, 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 not at all. In fact, when I was at the New Straits Times and at uh, the Star, I never subscribed to the kind of things that those two newspapers uh, did. So I was like uh, the bad boy. I was the one who was always going against company policy. And I got a lot of memos from my editors-in-chief, let me tell you that. Right. Because I was trying and to that's push in the, the book. That, that's, a, that's in the book. But why, why play it all? I mean, why be part of a system that was disseminating the ideology and the, the, the legitimation for the system that you so vehemently oppose? Well, I suppose in my own small way, I could still do whatever I could, you know, whatever I believed in. And, you know, even when I was entertainment editor at the New Straits Times, I was putting in things that were political. I was discussing political issues in the context of entertainment. No, okay, this is a very interesting argument. I think Anwar Ibrahim also makes this argument about his 16 years or so in government, that somehow he was trying his best. Does it mean the system is actually people with... With, uh, with good souls, with uh, sincere workers, that uh, people who are motivated by something other than the venial values of the Barisan National? I mean, are you saying that? I mean, is this system then redeemable? Because no, recycled I, people like yourself? I, I, I mean, I don't know what uh, uh, Ibrahim's motivation was, but in my case, I wasn't trying to change the system from within. No, that, so that wasn't my, my, but why not? my calling. Because it's impossible to do that unless you are the editor-in-chief. Unless you're able to stand up to the, 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 the people who matter, the big people who are going to decide your policy. So I could only do it within my own small way, you know, almost like a guerrilla, if you will. So I had no illusions that I was going to be able to uh, change a lot of minds. I was, had no illusions that I was going to uh, change the world. So I try to do it in my own small way. Why not leave, work from outside, work for the NGO, uh, for an NGO, for the, all those kind of alternative voices that have been ex in existence since the, since the 80s, no, since the in 70s? No, in, in, in those days, it, there were not many of such. There were not many alternatives. Where, where would you find an alternative? There was no Malaysia Kini. Uh, Consumer Association uh, of Penang, they had a magazine. I mean, they, they're all these, you know, to some consumer. And they had, there were yeah, a few things. Yeah. But you don't, you're not able to reach out to as many people as you could in the main, mainstream media. Yes. Now, speaking about reaching out to people, I mean, what would you say to somebody who said that the book that you put together now, which is partly work that you've done before, your literary work and theatrical work and also uh, your sort of media political commentaries, that this is really in some ways a kind of rant, that it, it, it will not appeal to somebody who doesn't already agree with you? Oh, it doesn't matter. I've said in the preface that uh, I don't expect everybody to agree with me. If you don't agree with me, that's fine, you know. Feel free to come and talk to me afterwards. But, but my idea is to, 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 to try and uh, reach out to uh, people who are like fan sitters who don't really know what they're going to do at the next general election. I would like to also reach out to people who read only the mainstream media. But will they read a book like this that has as its title, No More Bullshit? I mean, isn't it already taking a very partisan view? I mean, are you creating enough of a, a vocabulary or a space, a discursive space that allows people who are, as you say, fence-sitters to come into the, the Definitely. space? Definitely. I mean, doesn't it already sound partisan no, to you? No, it's not partisan at all. Partisan in what sense? If I criticize what the government is doing because I don't agree with it and I think that uh, its policies are wrong, Am I being partisan? No. I'm speaking as an ordinary citizen who cares for his country. But what I want to see is a better Malaysia. That's why I But you've take, you taken a public stance that people should be voting against the Barisan National in the next general election. Yes, because I think that if we want to have change... But isn't that partisan? Partisan in the sense that I want a better Malaysia. I want change to happen first. And you cannot have change if you continue to have the incumbent in power. Because they will not reform. They need to sit out on the opposition bench, one term, two terms, whatever it takes, before they will reform themselves. So if we expect reform while they're still in government, I think we are fooling ourselves. So if you say that's partisan, well, 
All right. If I mean, me meaning you've staked uh, um, a position on behalf of a political party or a coalition and saying that you want people to vote for them because you uh, support them. Yes, but Is at the same time, I would say that uh, they are not necessarily... Uh, angels, that they are necessarily the best option, but they are the only option that we have if we want to see change. That, that change has to come first, and we have to entrench it into the Malaysian psyche that we can have two coalition, a two-coalition system. And that can happen if Pakatan wins the next general election. Then people will say, yeah, now we have two sets, two groups that we can choose from. Let's see which of the two groups will give a package that is best for the country. In one of your pieces, you referred to, or actually in a talk that you gave that was broadcast on Community Kini, you referred to Malaysia as practicing a subtle form of apartheid. Mm. Now, that's very strong language when you consider that perhaps, you know, nothing of the essential aspects of apartheid in South Africa are displayed here. For instance, the uh, classification of communities as subhuman, right? So, I mean, is th that kind of language, don't you think it will strike many Malaysians as extreme, a rather kind of, you know... I think you need to read the sense. book. You need to yeah. read that, read that uh, particular passage and, mm. and, and put it into context because I do say that we do not practice apartheid like uh, the... South uh, Africa, the, I know. But yes. you said it's a subtle form. You also a subtle it's a form because uh, we have institutionalized racial discrimination. Let us not forget that. Uh, and we have uh, divisive policies that set one set of people apart from another uh, set of people. Right. Okay. Let's let's start with a lot of democratic societies uh, claim formal equality for everybody, mm. right? But there are class divisions. And people who are poor also uh, feel excluded, feel that because of the, uh, the, the lack of resources, they are not doing well in the system. Sure. We also have that here. But why do you want to complicate it further by putting in another element, the element of race? Why don't we treat everybody as equal and we meet the needs of the people who are needy based on economic terms rather than on racial terms? Because that's not good for racial harmony. That's not good for the survival of this country. That's not good for the development of this country. But in 1970, after May 13th, after the suspension of democracy and the institution of, a, of the leadership of a kind of civilian um, um, dictatorship that we had, mm -hmm. uh, wasn't it necessary? Wasn't it something that was happening in the 50s and 60s that this system, in fact, in some way, genuinely addressed a perception of exclusion by uh, the majority community, the feeling that people were natives of the land but somehow could not access? I mean, we had uni sure, university yes. in the 50s and 60s had hardly any boom and Yes, I have nothing against it all, uh, affirmative action at all in this respect. Definitely not. But it does not have to be made so obvious that it is based on race. Even if we had, we, if we had an, an NEP that only addressed the needs of the people who, who needed help, instead of looking at them as Bumiputras only, and then therefore creating another class of people who are non-Bumiputras, if we could do that, that would have been fine. You know, Don't bring in the issue of race at all. I want to ask you about your language. Uh, you know, I think of people like Václav Havel, you know, here was a literary man, a man who also opposed uh, an oppressive regime uh, one that, you know, silenced him in many different ways and banned his work. Um, the, the writings, his essays have a very different quality. They're much more philosophical. Um, and yours is very different. And I'm wondering how you compare your work to, say, something like Havel's. I do not compare my work to anybody's. It's definitely, my work is not uh, at the same level as, as Havel's. And I, I, I don't think I have, first of all, the imagination or the talent to write it in that way. Uh, but what is most but important do you know, to do me... You, do you aspire to that, so what, I'm, what, what, what I aspire to do is to reach out to the ordinary Malaysians. And I know what our ordinary Malaysians are capable of, how much they can absorb. And I have to speak in plain, simple, direct language, which is what I do in this book, which is what I do in most of my writing. And in any case, I also believe that plain writing is the best way to reach out to people, really. You don't need to use all kinds of bombastic words or, 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 or complicated uh, uh, language in but order you know, to but reach but out to has, people. I'm, you know, Havel reached out to many. I mean, his language, was it something about Czech society or is it that Malaysians 
can't, in fact, accept that there are complex uh, complexities in the problems that we have. That isn't simply about setting up a meritocracy, isn't simply about being non-racial. There are genuine problems that cannot be resolved in, in some sort of simple way, and that we need a language that registers this complexity. Yes, I, we haven't reached that level yet. I think in terms of uh, the level of inter uh, intellectual, uh, intellectual <laughs> intellectuality that we have here, yeah. we, 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 we have to reach out to people uh, to that certain level, you know, otherwise our message gets lost. Sure, you could write something that was more philosophical, that was uh, more poetic, that was, uh, was more beautifully written, uh, less direct, yeah, less plain, fine. But how many people would, be able to, uh, would, would you be able to communicate to? So you have to be also aware of your readership. And I'm always aware of my readership. But you're not it's because of my training you, as a, a journalist. Jealous, but you're not saying that Malaysians are dumb. No, definitely not. But we haven't attained the, kind, the level of intellectuality that perhaps the checks of Havel's, Havel's time uh, already had. It may take us some time, you know. Look at how the universities are churning out graduates for crying out loud. Can you tell me, therefore, that we have uh, arrived at a certain level of intellectuality that is akin to Havel's checks? Come on, Sherrod. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. <laughs>